a Canadian-led team of scientists, including York University researchers, has offered the world its first glimpse of the properties of antimatter, bringing us a step closer to understanding how the universe was created. Scientists from the Alpha Collaboration used a sophisticated technique called microwave spectroscopy to zap anti-hydrogen atoms and reveal information about their properties. The international collaboration includes scientists from five Canadian institutions, along with the United States, Brazil, Denmark, Israel, Sweden, and the UK. The physics we want to look at is the difference between anti-hydrogen and hydrogen. And this is the first time we've ever actually probed that. And this, to me, is way more exciting than, than, than what we did before. The, the central question of the whole thing is the fact that at the Big Bang, matter and antimatter were created in equal amounts, and the universe as it exists today doesn't have a whole lot of antimatter. And so the question is, what happened to it? You know, you can't, you can't just, you know, open a door on the side of the universe and sweep it out. So where is it or what happened to it? And so the only way to answer that question is to compare matter and antimatter. And so if we can compare antihydrogen to hydrogen, we can make the most precise comparisons of matter and antimatter. When we trap the, the antihydrogen, um, we don't know if we have trapped it because you can't really see uh, it sitting there just waving at you. So we, we basically destroy it and, and we have a detector around the trap, the bottle, which picks up a signal of this destruction. So the computer analysis that decides if it was an anti-hydrogen uh, destruction or if it was just a bird flying by, um, that decision making uh, is done through an analysis that me and Scott are working on. Uh, antimatter is, as I told you, is a very important system to study. So I'm really interested in this topic. I basically work as shifter in the experiment. I mean, that's the, the task of running the experiment 24 hours per day. And I'm also involved in some kind of statistical analysis of the data. It's not a very simple thing to, to take two subatomic particles, like an antiproton and a positron, and make an atom out of it. It sounds simple, but when you actually have to do it, it's, it's very complex. So um, learning how to make these particles dance with each other was, was quite an interesting uh, thing. And the other thing we want to look at is you, you, you're you holding on to some antimatter and then you release it. Does, it. does it fall or does it go up? That's actually a question that, that we don't know the answer to. And of course, it would be the coolest thing in the world if it actually went up. I mean, like that would just be the coolest thing ever.